Yo guys and gals, what is up? It's Teach here, coming at you again with another video, and I am here to show you a pretty neat little trick that was shared with me, ah, we'll call it two months ago, give or take. I just told him that I would kind of hold on to this information while they were using it to defend their base, and then he was like, please, by all means, go ahead and start using this. He's got some really awesome tricks, by the way. I'll show you a couple more as we go. Um, as far as I have been told by him, he'd like to remain nameless for now. If he changes his mind, I'll go ahead and leave him some credits below, but... Other than that, this is a idea that was shown to me and I've kind of been expanding upon it a little bit. This is how you make invincible dinosaurs. I wish I was kidding. I'm not. Invincible. Now, there's a lot of use to this. A lot of people are going to be like, wait a minute. Excuse me? Now, yes, you are going to need a tech shield. To, you're going to need some dinosaurs too. Now, quick plug. If you haven't subbed and liked the channel already, please do so. That would be amazing. You guys rock. Thank you so much for all the support. I honestly had no idea that in under a year I'd have 25,000 subscribers. That's amazing. So I just want to say thank you for that, for those of you that have been here. And uh, hopefully we can have some cool stuff to go. All right. So anyways, let's keep going. So the Diploducus. Now this is a great starting point. The Velonosaur doesn't really matter. Um, Dodo doesn't really help at all. But... The bigger the tame, the better off you are. So, for example, Diplodocus has a ton of health, right? Ton. You can get these things up into 250k easy, no problem. This is a level 90, and it's got a fair sum of health already. Now, outside, it takes normal damage. You can see that yellow indicator right there doing damage to it. You shoot it in the head, you shoot it anywhere. It takes that yellow damage. However, there is a way to stop that. Inside of a tech shield, what you have to do is you have to back up to the point where inside of a tech shield, usually about right here, you hop off and you no longer have the ability to ride the, there we go, right about there. So see where I'm kind of like in this little area and I'm pushed inside the Bronto, or not the Bronto, but the uh, Diplo. If you get to that point, basically what happens, right about there, nope, still can ride him. There we go. So now I'm inside the shield. See how I don't have the access to ride him outside of this shield? Now, he's invincible. Now, in order to actually use this Diplodocus, I have to take down that shield. In order to damage him, I have to take down this shield. Now, some of you are going to be like, great, what's the point of this? Like, there's no value, so on and so forth. There's a ton of value to this. Um, Diplodocus are huge. They're almost impossible to knock back. So, that, that's a big issue. Um, notice again, some of you like right now, some of you PvP players are like, oh my goodness, I can use, this is an amazing base defense option. Um, it basically makes your dinos invincible and you can block off small swaths of land, which is pretty nice. Now you can also use this with a Bronto. Go ahead and make a Bronto saddle so I can actually, you know, ride this thing. Bronto saddle. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I want the Bronto. And you can place a Bronto inside of the shield. Just enough. And his tail whip will still technically go out. Um, you just have to find the right angle to make that happen. But he will block a ton of space. So large tames that are low to the ground are best for this. Because their hitboxes block things. Which is pretty cool. So see how I'm hopping off inside the shield now. That's what you want to go for. So I cannot ride this thing outside. Go ahead and show you. Now I have an invincible Bronto. Yes, this is this is 100% truthful. Um, so this Bronto cannot take damage now. It's not just the assault rifle. It is also a compound bow. Nothing can do damage. The funny thing is he's still technically there. I can see him. I just can't do damage to him. This is actually something written inside of ARC's code. Because it, if you look at the actual shield rules, as long as a certain amount of percentage of a dino is inside of a shield they cannot take damage so again see how i'm unable to ride him that means he is invincible at that point i'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit closer let's see if i can nope he is no longer invincible so see how i can ride this bronto from the outside boom he can take damage so what we can do we'll back up just a touch maybe uh we'll see if i can actually back up a little bit more there we go so now he's doing that. Now what can you do with this? Well, one, you can go ahead and encumber this guy. So put a whole bunch of stuff on him so he can't move. And put him on aggressive. That's always a really good idea because then you, you know, he's sitting there defending your base. Basically, an invincible turret that can take damage. 
which is pretty nice. Obviously, you have to have access to a tech rifle in order to actually, you know, damage the shield or a tech rex. Um, but all that being said, if you put some smaller dinos underneath them as well, so that the basically the tech rifle when they try and fire it at your shield can't take damage, uh, you have an unraidable base. I know I'm not kidding. I, I that that's 100% the truth. If you can't get to your base because these guys are blocking it, can't move, and they're undamageable, you win. That's just how this game works. Um, it wor that's, So that's a Tech S, S shield. This is a normal Tech shield. Same thing works. Just so you can see, it works with all force fields. It does not matter what kind of force field it is, whether it's S+, plus, SS, normal. Um, they all, as long as it's inside so you cannot ride the actual tame, uh, you cannot do damage. See? Damage on the inside no damage on the outside. Now this works with a whole bunch of tame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how this thing can be used. It's insane. I mean, realistically speaking, this is this is kind of game breaking because some people that live in caves and stuff like that will be able to block off their cave entrance and not take damage, which is, in my opinion, way too OP. So a great example, oil cave. Now, how could this be too OP in oil cave? You have a sharp corner here and a sharp corner over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and gamma up a little bit so you can see what's going on in here. This is oil cave. There's tons of huge alpha bases in here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and slap down a shield. Let's put this bad boy like right about here. I'm gonna toss an element in this thing. Let's split, I don't know, 10 off. That should be plenty. There we go. Activate the barrier. Now we're gonna increase the size of this just a little bit because we wanna be able to cover some of our dinos here. So now I want you to think about this. So in order to get in this cave, you have to go down this little hole right here. Okay. This little zone. Now, if I have a tech shield, I'm, I'm going to go on the other side of this so I can actually see when I'm expanding this tech shield. Uh, let's just go increase 4.4. That should be enough. Yeah, it'll be plenty. So I can't see that tech shield around the corner. Okay. There's nothing I can see about it. It's just there. Nothing I can do. Boom, tech shield. So, if you keep this thing running, all you gotta do is keep a dino inside of that little range that I just talked about. And uh, we'll get another Bronto saddle. Whoops. Because Brontos don't really have a knockback, and you can kind of wedge them in smaller areas, you can basically make these things invincible. Now you can also, and I'll show you another kind of cheesy thing to do with this in a second, uh, but, we're going to step as far forward as we possibly can in here, kind of wedging his feet forwards. I'm still inside the shield. So, notice I can't actually see him or ride him from the outside. He is invincible. So, if you can get a right good angle here, all I got to do is be like, okay, see how I can't get past that? His hitbox is right there. Now, you can run past. You're going to want some things in the lower levels, too. But this Bronto entirely blocks off the path from up high. I cannot get past him. Because he is there, he just can't take damage because of this shield right here. Now, you could also use a racer. Now, people have used racers for this method before. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, cry out this guy up. Um, now, what can you do with a racer for this? Now, that's where it gets interesting. So, here's the racer. I'm going to go ahead and give him a saddle, parasair, platform saddle. Go ahead and put this on said racer. And obviously you can see he's a lot smaller, so he gives us a lot more range. Now this is where this gets a little bit funky. So if I place down, come on, there it goes. Wait a minute, what? Excuse me. That's not what I wanted to do. Hello, Giganotosaurus. Can you go back in your ball? Thank you. Um, so if I place down that right there, so I've got two little things, two foundations here. Uh, you can actually kind of block with Let's go ahead and show you. There's no point in me explaining this because it's kind of hard to explain. Um, but you can block with this. And let's go ahead and just give me one more here. There we go. And let's drop down the walls. Okay. Okay. So now first off, OP. If you've never done this kind of style before, um, you can pretty much cover the entire front side of a racer with this, and it's way too OP. Uh, let's 
go ahead and get inside the shield, barely outside. Okay, there we go. So, notice how I'm still inside the shield. The racer cannot take damage. Okay, the racer can't take damage. Boom, you can see that. Okay, no damage. I can, however, hit these things. Now, let me go ahead and show you that. Um, what do I want to use C4? C4 sounds like a good idea. I like boom boom. Let's just do some classic C4 ammo. There we go. Okay, C4 remote detonator. That'll be plenty. All right, so now that I toss this thing down, go ahead and run over here a little bit. Notice, it does take damage, so you don't need to worry about that. You can use this as like a temporary wall, but because the structure does not work the same, um, the racer doesn't take the damage, but the structure does. So that's kind of cool. So someone's going to think they're really sneaky, go ahead and toss down like 40 C4, and be like, hee hee, I win. And then they find out that the racer took literally no damage, but the structure did. So that's one thing you can do with this. You can load a whole bunch of these up. So let's say you wanted to do this with a racer. Um, you could, you don't have to. I've, I've seen people do this with the, um, how do I say this properly? The Diplodocus. Uh, the Diplodocus is something that is common because it's got a huge base health stat and it can uh, do a knockback attack if something gets super close to it. It's also really low to the ground. So the lower the ground the tames are, the actual more damage that they can kind of prevent. Um, obviously, if I can like wedge or race her really far in here, like you see here, I can't get past there. I can get past there. And let's say you start wedging a whole bunch of tames in here. Notice how I can ride him still. You can adjust your barrier. Increase, 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 increase. A little bit too far, probably. But you see the point. You can adjust your barrier to actually fit, fit your zone, um, which is kind of funny because you're basically able to customize your own invincible defense, which is just bonkers to me. All right, can I? Yep, so that should be good. Now notice the racer is blocking this zone right here. Can't take damage. Boom. I can't actually do any damage to this thing. Now you can wedge some smaller tames in there. Um, some of the tames that work really well with this also, let's check out the Giganotosaurus. Giganotosaurus, pretty awesome little tame for this because he has the ability to block a huge hitbox. Um, and they can kind of fit into areas they shouldn't be able to, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, and you can kind of like adjust and see that, I'm gonna go ahead and just cryo up my racer here. There we go. You can kind of wedge this thing into some pretty crazy low, uh, zones. You can stick its tail, and this is where it gets really OP. Stick the tail of this Giganotosaurus out the window, and then hop off. And you've got a swinging tail that goes through here. Now you can actually like wedge him up on a little line and stuff like that, so it's really impossible. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I mean by this. It's obstructed. Okay, I don't want it to be obstructed. I want it to work. Eh, oh well, you get the point. So, if I can get him to like face kind of downwards, uh, his tail will go down and kind of block the entire cave entrance, which is, yeah, frustrating. Uh, because you basically have an invincible Giga Tail swinging back and forth, blocking bullets and stuff like that. Obviously, you can see what I'm trying to get across here. Um, but you can easily use this in a million different ways. The strategy of invincible dinosaurs. The Giga works really well with this. Notice I don't have the ride option. So I can just sit here and boom. Invincible. Now, that's pretty awesome. Uh, one thing that kind of I don't know say counters this. Uh, if I go ahead and do this, I'm going to go ahead and behavior unclaim. I mean, options unclaim, not behavior unclaim. And we're going to leave him right there. I can ride this Giga from the inside. I can't damage things on the outside of this, which is nice. So you can't, like, use this to your advantage. Now, as soon as you get outside the shield, you will be able to damage this thing. But you have to be outside the shield in order for it to work. This is not something that's, like, going to work inside of the shield. So you have to be outside. But, I mean, it was quite a bit of distance before I could actually get that to work, you'll notice. Um, so you can get a lot of range with this Giganotosaurus. So, anyways, lots of things you can do with this, but this is how you make invincible defensive or attacking dinos if you really wanted to. Alright, anyways, hopefully this helps you out. Teach.